Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. My partner John Coleman and I have a really amazing guest today. Uh, John, why don't you tell us about it? Well, uh, folks, we've got a very, very interesting person. Art and I have just made a new friend recently. Mm -hmm. And she is a very talented uh, writer, but she's in transition. Uh, it's, in this day and age, that's probably the wrong term to use. <laughs> she, she, is, she, she is in midlife changing her profession. And that's Freddie, not an John, easy John, thing John, to would do. you say that she is having an amazing act too? Blossom oh, before oh. our eyes? Art, so well put. You, how do you do that? That was... I <laughs> uh, you sent me a script. <laughs> anyway, uh, we want to introduce you to... I Before we introduce her and, and bring her on, I want to show you, um, uh, read to you, um, something she wrote, which I think defines her as we know her so far. We're going to meet her and learn more. She wrote, um, Midlife is a beautiful awakening, not a crisis, mm. and a force to be reckoned with. It is impossible to put out our flame and desire for more knowledge, purpose, and meaning while we embrace and explore these middle-aged years. Amen, sister. <laughs> so let's meet Lillian Taylor, the writer. Hi, Lillian. Hi, Lillian. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I. I introduce you as a new friend. Um, we don't know much about each other, but I'm dying to learn more. And of course, we want to share it with our audience. And what I love, forgive me for the confusion of the word transition. I, you know, I, times change. It once meant something else. Uh, but you you chose in midlife, I, I don't know what age it was, around in, but I'm assuming in your 50s, you chose to become a writer. Did you have any writing background, what made you do that? No, actually, absolutely no writing background at all. But really? um, when I was in my early 50s, um, I went through a particularly hard year of loss. Um, my dad, my grandfather, who grew up next, I grew up next door, and my at the time, 53-year-old boyfriend all passed away within nine months. Oh, my God. And it, so the three most significant men in my life were just gone. Oh. And I really struggled with that. And so that affects other parts of your life. Anyway, one day I just had this urge that I wanted to write a story about what I was going through. And I started writing. And as I was writing for several months, I realized that there are other women in midlife that must be going through same kinds of challenges, having the same kinds of feelings. And I w attended a workshop in Hartford. I'm from Connecticut, as you know with um, one of Nora Ephraim's sisters. This is, again, I wasn't a writer, kind of felt like, what, what do I, why am I gonna go here? But I, I went, and one of her sisters, Hallie Ephraim, the only one of the sisters who started writing late in life, she was in her 40s, and she gave a great keynote, and one of the things she said that's still with me is she said, Writers write when they have something to say. And sometimes that doesn't come until later in life. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And you had plenty to say. Oh, yeah. I, I, I definitely have and had the challenge of being a new writer is having the courage to say the uncomfortable stuff yeah. that I'm mm -hmm. constantly working on. Yeah. Now your website uh, is LillianTaylorWriter.com. Yes. And you, I, I guess the right word is blog. I'm, I'm always confused by these things. But you, you write articles um, for other women. 
I write, so the way I see blogging as I've been on this journey the last few years is uh, I know a lot of bloggers will have committed to posting new blogs weekly or monthly. And in the beginning, the very beginning, I was trying to do that. And I couldn't do it for a number of reasons. I was working full time. Um, I didn't always have something to say. And so I, I stepped back and said, I'm only going to write when I have something to say. So uh, I, I don't want to seem um, fragmented, but I don't necessarily post a new blog every month. I might post one every two weeks for a couple of months and then nothing for a month because I didn't have anything to say. Well, you know, talking, like uh, uh, talking about write, uh, writing and having something to say, you actually write a lot and it may not show up as a blog every week or every hour or every 13 seconds. Look, I just got this bottle of Tang. Uh, that dates me. Uh, but you've been writing a screenplay and, um, and uh, working on that for several years now. So, I mean, writing is just this whole field. It's not something that necessarily shows up on the front page of a newspaper every day. Uh, so this longer term project that you're working on, can you tell us something about that and the protagonist? Sure. So the protagonist, it's semi-autobiographical. Um, as I said, when I first started writing, I realized that um, there are just other women that in midlife and post midlife beyond that are, are going through the same challenges. You know, we hear the cliche words, empty nesting and uh, other ones fail me right now. But, you know, basically when your life gets turned upside down, uh, and that can mean different things for different people. It can mean financial loss. It can mean divorce. It can mean not knowing how to deal with empty nesting and financial loss and divorce and the death. I have friends who are young widows who were widowed at 50. So um, my character is from a very um, affluent community that she fell into all the trappings for years and years and years and really thought she knew who she was until those things were stripped away from her. And she's fighting to maintain that life in secrecy because she's shamed now that she has lost and she can't manage her life any longer. And she realizes the community that she's built her life and friendships and relationships around really aren't her friends necessarily. And she begins to think about assuming an online identity as a dear Abby. And even her own community doesn't know it's her. And she finds a different community, a more real community that she thinks she's helping with her wisdom. But in the end, they're really helping her find out who she really is. That mm. sounds delicious. Mm. I can, honest to goodness, I, I really <laughs> can see, I, as you were telling that story, I could see some classic uh, scenes uh, for some great actresses in there. Uh, so I, I think you're going to be able to sell that uh, and do very well. And I want you to hold out for a feature film, not a, um, a Hallmark movie of the week or what, what is the... Uh, <laughs> What's the? Well, no, no, no. Wait, wait a minute. Hallmark. Don't, don't hold that. Hallmark is great. They shoot in Canada, okay? <laughs> they treat you really good, and they make a series <laughs> out of it. John, we'll actually, talk about this later on. <laughs> actually, Hall, Hallmark uh, shoots quite a few of their Christmas films right here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Because they. Um, they have a production company that they work with here in Connecticut. And I actually, in Stonington at the Arts Community Center a couple of years ago, uh, he's a local boy, young guy in his 30s, he and his wife. And they had, they have a small, at the time, production company. They did a couple of the, the Hallmark Christmas films. And um, 
I guess Hallmark loved them. And so now all year round, especially they like mystic, our little shoreline communities and stuff, uh, constantly they're advertising, hey, you want to be in a Hallmark Christmas movie? <laughs> Show up. Well, I haven't I'm done gonna, it yet. That's send great. me send me the clippings the next time I'm coming out there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember I, I used to live in uh, Brockton, Mass for uh, a couple of years after uh, growing up in uh, New York and Brooklyn, and uh, uh, we always used to stop at uh, the Seaport Mystic Seaport. That's sort of like that halfway mark. Yeah, to grab a, it's a beautiful area. Yeah. So, so uh, thank, uh, thank uh, John. Now, now tell us something else you shouldn't do. Okay, but. <laughs> You and I, uh, uh, Lillian, we'll talk later. I'll have my people call your people. <laughs> Art, Art will be happy to represent you when you sell your script. Yes. <laughs> um, transitioning, again, forgive that word, but it's a life change for you. Now, you yes, have yes. to earn a living, so yes. what... what as a writer, how often do you? I mean, do you, you work at this regularly? You, you, your, your writing job is even though it's not paying yet because you haven't sold the script. Your writing job, do you look at it as a job? Do you do it on a, like a couple hours a day or something? And and aside from the job that you know pays the rent. Yeah, so I have a basic kind of job that keeps money in, so I can keeps money coming in. It's a job. It's not a career. But yeah. it also, um, what it does, when I made the decision two years ago to go hard, hit, hit it this hard, I realized I had to make the decision. You can't have one toe in or it's just a hobby, right? Yeah. And so I made the decision about two years ago that I was going to take myself seriously, set some goals, and go for it, as they say. Yeah. And that's when I took a little job that has basically just flexibility. Um, so I can set my hours during the week, but it still provides me with flexibility like today, that we could have this meeting. And, you know, sure. I could change my hours. Um, and also, I'm an early riser, and meaning like at usually typically, typically by 5 a.m. And I do my most of my work um, from 5 to 10 or 11 in the morning, and then I'm out the door for work. And... Uh, yeah, so I just I'm just making it work and it is a journey and it is a transition. And I'll be honest, it's scary. It's scary because you're out here on your own, you know, yeah. um, and you're trying to network and you're trying to get educated and you're trying to learn. But every time I feel like and question and doubt myself, something happens. Like getting the email from art who saw me on LinkedIn and looked at my social media presence and just connected to say, hey, can we talk? So these are the things that I'm grateful for because to me, it validates the journey that I'm on. Yeah, it, well, courage, I think, is a, is a good word because uh, it, as you point out, it is scary. You. you change careers you have to mm -hmm. look at yourself as a businesswoman now in a new career and you're right your writers are solitary individuals i mean you're you know take any writer they can sit in the kitchen and with a laptop right. and and write and there's no office and there's no boss and there's no water know. cooler there's no water cooler talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right yeah, and it and the the um, it's it really is a, a a courageous thing to do, uh, as you said, you know, jump in, and and yeah. so tell me about your. I, I noticed on your website, you already have merchandise, and I love your logo, by the way. I don't know if I told you that. Yeah, but tell us a way, I, you know, John, Let's take a little because uh, we happen to to have heard it before. Tell us a little about your uh, your logo and how that happened. So. My website came after my 
uh, Facebook page, um, Lillian Wright's Facebook page, which I'm going to uh, do a little shameless self-promotion um, that I just reached 35,000 likes on my Lillian uh, Wright's Facebook page. So when I first designed that logo to do that page, I really didn't want any ethnicity assigned to that page. So I designed it with just the glasses and the red lips. It wasn't a stretch, right? <laughs> and no one knew, and I don't know if I've told you this. So the page is about eight years old now, and no one knew what I looked like until September of 2020. Really? Because Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't want anyone to know what I looked like. And I didn't want to do uh, Facebook Lives. And I, I was still, I was trying, I was posting a lot of funny memes. That's how I established that page. People knew that in the morning they would see funny coffee memes because they know Lillian loves coffee and all of that. So I started working with a coach last year um, about how to grow my presence, how to be a voice on social media, because that's a goal of mine for midlife and after for women to talk about stuff and, and just not fluff, but get real about conversation. And he said to me, you know, you have to show your face. And I didn't want to. So I finally decided it was on my birthday um, in September of 2020. I didn't give them any warning. I just did a Facebook Live. And I said, hey, it's me. And you know, I have to, I have to compliment you um, because when I contacted you, uh, I, I actually may have known that uh, you were African-American. But it just never occurred to me till you just said something now that you don't you're you're not writing an ethnic column you're writing a column about um, uh, or uh, stories about middle-aged women okay it doesn't matter whether you're uh, Asian there may be certain things if you have an Asian background or African American or uh, Italian but you're writing about a commonality that yeah, exactly. women yeah. facing midlife and things that you faced uh, are facing really it's 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 a, a universal uh, story exactly not, that's not why, enough of, I'm sorry yeah. that's why I made that decision when I established that page I was like if you're scrolling and you see a black woman you're just gonna think whatever you're gonna think okay but if you see a pair of glasses and red lips right I guarantee you're not thinking the same thing as if you saw a black woman. <laughs> so I didn't want any ethnicity attached. I just wanted a community of midlife women. So yeah. I got away with it for seven years. <laughs> well, I, you know, the other thing is that you are very uh, good at humor. You, you use humor really well. And I, I can without having read the screenplay, I can see a lot of humorous scenes happening in that. <laughs> but because you use humor, that's universal. That That's common to all people. And uh, you do it very well. I, I love your uh, the blogs that I've read. Thank you. I, thank you so much. Because, you know, sometimes you feel like, is anybody even reading these? But I, I will say, <laughs> you do. But, but, I pride myself, and that's why I say I don't say, like, every Monday I'm going to drop a blog or whatever. I, I share the things that I feel that women, and I do have some faithful men followers as well, but connect to and that are relatable. And I have, I, I get messages from women saying, I look forward to your post in the morning because I have a little system on my Facebook page. Um, it's not all original content. I established a lot of it just by posting funny memes, but they knew in the morning I have the, the 6 a.m. is morning moment, which is usually something 
inspirational quote or whatever, then a funny one, 9 a.m., I always have a coffee one, and then I have a couple more during the day. And um, people tell me that they look forward to my post. Well, I'd like to say that um, uh, John uh, sorted us out by saying um, uh, that and not everybody that we interview uh, is a friend, becomes a friend. Sometimes they're just wonderful stories. This is a wonderful story and I love doing it. But uh, John started this out by saying, we'd like to, I think it was something to the tune of, we'd like to introduce you to a new friend. And uh, I think that uh, we have found a friend and we look forward Thank to speaking you. to you in the future. One thing I would appreciate uh, for our audience is if you would, uh, again, uh, give us the name of your website and your Facebook page, if you could, uh, so that we can make sure that they can uh, follow you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. So my website is LillianTaylorWriter.com. And your Facebook and my page? My Facebook page is, this is the only way, it's the old school way of saying it, but I can be sure you can find me. So it would be www.facebook.com slash Lillian Wrights. Lillian Wrights. Mm -hmm. Great. Intense. Now, before we go, you have to tell me about your store on your website. You have to tell me about your merchandise. You've got mugs with your logo on it and and some uh i guess the word is memes on the yes. mugs I, I love them tell me uh thank you how you came to do all of those so as i said when i and i still do it i hold true one of the things that helped grow my facebook page is um, my love for coffee and so i used to do in the morning a lot of just funny coffee memes and then I got the idea about a year ago um, that I wanted to start my own mug line. So I started designing, I call them my snarky mug collection. And so just funny little sayings on them with my trademark glasses as a graphic. But my favorite part of the line is I call it my I've been mammed line. Yes. Now, okay, now, you know, that means di different things for different people. In the South, I've talked to women from the South, and they're like, you know, that's just a sign of respect. Yes, it is. But there's a whole community out there of us that when you use the M word, it's like driving a Stake through our hearts, okay? <laughs> so I decided that I've created my snarky mug collection around the I've been mammed, don't yes. ma'am me, your ma'am is showing, you might want to tuck that in. You know, there's a whole... <laughs> so they're, they're very fun to create and I'm promoting them. Again, sh uh, shameless self-promotion here, but I really want to see them catch on because they're fun and they make great gifts as well. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I love, I recognize it immediately, not being from the South. I didn't, um, you know, I, I recognize that it is a sign of respect uh, as an address. But I also know that um, when you reach a certain age, right? <laughs> exactly. You don't want to be ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, do I look like your grandmother? Yes. Get out of here. Yeah. And so, John, does that mean that I have to stop ma'aming you again? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. Yeah. Anyway, I loved I loved that uh, I've been mammed uh, mug, and uh, I know somebody who needs one. Quite. <laughs> uh, Lillian, anyway, this thank has you. been just wonderful. Thank you to our new friend Lillian, and uh, we look forward to seeing you as you continue to write, and uh, maybe we uh, get that screenplay sold, and uh, right. we want to hear back from you uh, from time to time to see what's going on with uh, uh, Lillian, the writer, Lillian Taylor, writer. Well, I feel I have two new friends and yeah. I am grateful to have had this opportunity to speak with you today. This has been so much fun. 
And thank you for that, for making it fun. And I do hope that I can give you a great update um, moving forward as I dust off that screenplay and try and make something happen. Thank you very much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.